Alpha. Hello, I'm Terry Donnelly and I'm a Sony Europe Imaging Ambassador. And thank you so much for dropping by today. And I'm going to speak to you about my time spent with Wiltshire Air Ambulance. Wiltshire Air Ambulance is a self-funding um, emergency service. And through photography, I wanted to raise awareness of their self-funding requirements and to gain followers and perhaps supporters who can help with that uh, self-funding. So my background has, has been involved with uh, air ambulance services since 2004. And at that time, it was with the Northwest Air Ambulance Service. But I became more involved with Wiltshire Air Ambulance in 2019 for a number of reasons. One, they've got their all self-contained um, centre where the helicopter operates from, the management are based there, the fundraisers are all there. So it made good sense to actually uh, to tie up with Wiltshire Air Ambulance and to operate from their, their facility in uh, Melcham. So when we look at the funding requirements for Wiltshire Air Ambulance, it's actually set at £3.75 million pounds per year and that's how much it costs to keep the helicopter airborne and also keep the rapid response vehicles operating, which are the cars which are equipped with all the same medical equipment as the, as the helicopter. Now that equates to £10,000 per day. Now that's a lot of money to raise a day, but it's not a lot of money to save somebody's life, I'm sure you'll agree. So Wiltshire Air Ambulance attended over 1,200 incidents in Wiltshire in 2019. They can fly to any location within 11 minutes, and I'll, I'll speak about the breakdown of that 11 minutes shortly. And their tagline from their website is, we save lives. You are unlikely to see Wiltshire Air Ambulance for perhaps um, a minor incident of a sprained wrist or somebody who's got, got cuff that needs a couple of stitches. But if you need life-saving critical care, um, they are there to, to provide that service to you. So when we look at the way the, the time is broken down, it's one minute to accept a, a call, an emergency call, one minute to take off, uh, to prepare the aircraft, one minute to take off, seven minutes to any location within wheelchair, and one minute to land the aircraft. And it's when the call is received, all the flight crew know exactly what they need to do to get the aircraft born. And more importantly, all members of the flight crew know what other members of the flight crew are going. And it's a well-oiled machine that kicks into action as and when needed. So a daily shakedown when I attended Wiltshire Air Ambulance, I spent three days with the, the flight crew. And normally in the morning we'd go in, we'd discuss any think what was taking place, I'd maybe have a few ideas of the types of shots I'd like to get if possible, but well, that was always secondary to the emergency services. That was 100% had to come first every single time. So a lot of the time the shots which I wanted to take were just not possible due to operational duties. Um, and at that point I'd slip into um, a photojournalistic mode and capture images which happened as they happened. So this is one image I, I took from a chase helicopter with Helimag 22 coming in to land at the airbase at the Wiltshire Air Ambulance. This was a little bit of a challenge because it was quite windy and we were being buffeted about slightly. So it was a challenge really to get a slower enough shutter speed to have blur in the rotors, but also to have a high enough shutter speed to keep the body of the aircraft nice and sharp. So this is when things like for the, with the Sony system, you've got in-body image stabilization, and that really helps out. And that gives a, a negative effect of movement of the camera or any shaking, and it just helps you get that sharp image. And this is a general view of the hangar at the airbase of the Wiltshire Air Ambulance. And again, using that nice big wide angle, the, the 12 millimeter on the full frame, um, and it gives you that general view, but also it makes it more dynamic and it brings all areas of the shot into play. Again, a side view, so you can see the aircraft sitting in the hangar. And this particular picture, we took uh, Helimed 22, which is the call sign for the, for the aircraft of the Wiltshire Air Ambulance. It's actually going out on a night mission. And it's one of the few emergency services that can fly at night. They have full night vision capabilities. And in the, the shot at the moment, we've got Nikki, who's the pilot, 
and also Craig, the paramedic in the front seat, and they're just about to take off. I wanted to capture this shot, I wanted the full spin of the rotors to get the full disc, and that meant I had to shoot at really, really slow shutter speeds. And this is actually one fifteenth of a second, and that's handheld. And that again, that's because I can't take a tripod out or anything which potentially could blow away from the downdraft of the rotors of the aircraft. So again, thinking about kit, thinking about what it can do, what the possibilities are, very, very uh, good to have this in-body stabilization system again, stabilizing that shot and making it possible to get the full spin of the rotors, but also get a sharp image. This is another image, this is the RRV, which is the Rapid Response Vehicle. Now these vehicles are fitted with the same life-saving equipment as the aircraft is. And there may be times when the aircraft uh, cannot fly or it's faster to get to an incident using the RRV. Uh, could be location, it could be very close location to the airbase. Uh, it could be that the aircraft is already out on a call. It could also be the aircraft is down for maintenance. But it's a great backup and it's a great service knowing that if a call comes in, what's your air ambulance are there to take the call and go out and give that life-saving critical care at every opportunity. This particular image I took, I'm going to show you behind the scenes shot. It looks like the car is travelling at speed, but obviously um, we didn't want to be hanging out of vehicles or uh, going to them lengths. So we actually set up a rig and you can actually see uh, there's a boom arm attached to the front of the car and on the end of that boom arm is a Sony A9 and I've got a release trigger to fire the picture. So I'm looking for um, a, for shutter speeds of around one second and we're moving the car very slowly just to give that an impression of movement and speed. And in this picture you can see the boom arm is still in the shot. This is the actual picture from the A9 and then it was just a case really of using a little bit of Photoshop technique just to remove the boom arm and then just to finesse the image with uh, changes in contrast and maybe add a little bit of uh, colour grading. And then we end up with the final shot. So this picture I took of Matt. Matt is the uh, senior uh, pilot of Lusher Air Ambulance who's got a, um, a glittering history of a uh, of flight. Uh, Matt served in the army, he flew helicopters all around the world and he actually finished his career as a test pilot in the army. And to be a test pilot in, in any profession, you have to be the absolute cream of the crop, and that's no exception with Matt. So this is uh, the area where Matt works, this is the control room. So I've basically just uh, flooded the, uh, the map behind Matt with a, a blue gel, just to add separation. And I've just caught this picture of Matt looking back at the camera. It was an on four shot, and it was one actually as Matt was working, and I actually set the environment and I just waited for Matt to walk into that particular area and just asked him to turn to me and uh, I just caught this picture of him. This picture of Matt also, this is when he's preparing to uh, take the aircraft up so he's doing his pre-flight checks. Working with the emergency services you have to work quick, they have to be unobtrusive and you have to almost be a fly on the wall. So. Knowing your equipment, um, knowing what it's capable of, having an idea of the type of shot you can get is absolutely crucial. So as Matt is preparing the aircraft for flight, I've taken this picture using the 12 to 24 millimeter lens and I've shot it really, really wide. And my aims were to actually capture the environment what Matt is sitting in. So this is his office in, in many respects. So we've got all the control gear, all the switch gear. Um, we've got that really, really, um, intense look on Matt's face and that is something that Matt probably wasn't aware of um, at the time uh, uh, just how focused he does become and it's almost as if he switches modes and at that one moment in time all that matters in his life is that aircraft and the mission he's about to embark on with the, the, the paramedics of the service. So when we look at this next uh, picture this is Nicky, Nicky's also a um, pilot with the wheelchair air ambulance and again I've wanted to get a second picture of Nikki this was on a separate day in the operating environment where she works in again which we, you know we can refer to as her office this is a slightly different picture from Matt's 
Matt was um, very, very intense. He had his visor down. He was staring straight into the camera. This particular picture is more airy, more relaxed. And Nicky is looking away from the camera, got the visor up. And simple things like this, we can totally change the feel of an image. And it's always worth considering in your own photography. Now, Nicky, again, is a highly skilled uh, search and rescue pilot. And the pilots at Wiltshire Air Ambulance are actually the, 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 the finest available. Uh, so you're in safe hands if they need to get to an incident or they need to carry the patients. They've got all that wealth of experience behind them. So this is Rob. Rob is also a pilot with Wiltshire Air Ambulance. And this time he's sitting in the control room. So one of the challenges I had was that the control room had overhead lighting, which is uh, typically fluorescent. Uh, we've got strong sunlight coming in through the windows and it's all light which we want to eliminate from the picture. So it was a case of taking down the window blinds, switching the lights off in the ceiling and providing my own light to light a portrait of Rob. Now we didn't want to interfere with Rob uh, and take him away from his duties so it was very much a case of setting the lighting in the room and just waiting for the opportunity. And Rob had just been reading something on his uh, data pad, his scribe, and just at that second he looked up at the camera and was managed to take a picture. Now one of the ways I could be unobtrusive when obtaining these images was by using uh, features like a uh, totally silent shutter on the cameras, where the camera does not make any noise whatsoever. So for all intents and purposes the crew weren't even aware that I was taking pictures at this time. So this time I've come outside with um, Big Rob, he's uh, a pilot and he, he is actually quite big, he's six foot seven, so that's where his name comes from. So I wanted to get a little bit more creative with the pictures with Rob. So I've actually created a picture with the Helimed 2.2 reflected in, in the visor. And one of the ways of doing that is just to really play with angles, uh, shooting wide angle, and the, using the, the background of the, the hangar to encompass and to uh, wrap around Rob. This was another creative shot we did. And whenever you're taking pictures, you need to think about the end usage. You know, there's gonna be times where maybe the pictures are gonna go into a double page spread. So you need to use a lot of negative uh, space over to the left hand side there. And that was one of the, the intentions with this picture. But again, we've used that reflection in Rob's visor just to really add a narrative to the picture and just to show what he is, who he is and why, why he's there. And this is a picture of Big Rob without the helmet on, uh, just for reference. Um, and we're just shooting them against the Helimed 2.2 which is in the hangar at the moment. But using that nice wide um, aperture just to get a, a very narrow depth of field just to separate separate Rob away from the background. Utilising eye autofocus on the Sony as well to make sure that we've got really really good focus even when using such a shallow depth of field. So this is Dan, this is a, Dan's a paramedic and you'll see Dan driving the car in a moment which we, we showed earlier, the RRV and Dan is a critical care paramedic um, it's a lifesaver, there's no other way of putting it. But just at the end of the shift, I wanted to get a couple of portrait shots. So I actually set this, this up with a single light and I just asked Dan to come in. And um, he'd been on a long shift, he was waiting to go home, so it was very good of him to stand in for this for me. But just using the features in the cameras in the Sony Alpha system, I autofocus, it puts the focus squarely onto the iris and it makes sure you've got a really sharp shot at even such a shallow depth of field as this, which was f1.8. So this is Rocky. Rocky is a paramedic. He's originally from South Africa and he came to the UK to work in the emergency services in the UK. He was fully qualified in South Africa, but because of the requirements in the UK, he had to study again. And Rocky went to university in the UK to get his medical qualifications. And that's tantamount to the absolute professionalism and dedication the members of the air crew at Wiltshire Air Ambulance have. So this particular image was a, an image I had in mind to take. Unfortunately, I couldn't set the lighting up beforehand because it's in a controlled environment, because there's drugs in the room and other things which uh, 
means that the room has to be locked at all times unless it's being used for a specific use. So being able to work quickly with the camera is absolutely paramount. So the lighting I could set up really quickly and then using features on the Sony Alpha system such as the IOSO focus meant that I didn't have to worry about having a soft image later on. I knew that the camera would absolutely lock focus onto the eye and give me a good usable image at the end of the, at the, end of the day. Moving outside now, and this is Craig. Craig is also a paramedic. And this is another image I'd indicated. So I wanted a picture of Craig with the Helimed 2.2 in the hangar behind. And it was great just to get Craig nice and relaxed because he was a little bit um, apprehensive about getting his picture taken. But as you can see, he's relaxed right down. He's folded his arms, got a nice smile. And it's a nice environmental portrait of, of, of Craig. And again, it's tantamount to the equipment. Equipment makes the job much easier and much more attainable for you to do. Use an eye autofocus, being able to see the exposure value through the electronic viewfinder. All these things means you can work very, very quickly. I'm a big uh, supporter of, of working from the rear screen on the camera as well. And that means I can look over the top of the camera and engage with the person I'm taking the picture with. And that all helps, especially when perhaps somebody's a little bit apprehensive in, with getting the picture taken. And this is Craig as he finishes his shift. And I did want to take a series of these pictures. I took one of Dan earlier. So I asked Craig to stand in. And once again, it was the same situation. I also focused working really, really well to make sure I got a good sharp image and good focus on the eye. Moving back into the hangar this time. And this time, this is Sophie. Sophie is a uh, paramedic also. Um, Sophie comes from the NH NHS background. And we wanted to get a picture of her with the Helimed 2.2 uh, outside the hangar. Now we had to balance up slightly with the lighting, very, very bright outside. So we had to expose the camera for the ambience, which was outside. And then we had to introduce lighting to light Sophie. But again, using the eye autofocus made this job much, much easier. Being able to see the exposure value in the EVF or on the rear screen, again, it makes the work so much faster. It means we can get through the work much, much quicker. Using silent shutter again, it just takes the apprehensiveness away, perhaps from the person what you're photographing, where they're nice and relaxed and you're taking pictures, they don't really even realize that the picture's being taken at that moment. And moving around slightly, I asked Sophie to just check a, a medical pack. So she's just opened that up on the floor for me. She's double checking. And one of the things what the air ambulance crew do, they're constantly checking the kit. They're constantly checking the procedures. The pilots are constantly checking the aircraft. And it's all geared for that one second when they get a call, when everything clicks into action. Nothing is left to chance. Everything is checked double checked procedures are double checked and they constantly train and improve and everything what they do and when you think about the staff and the roles what they do the paramedic he's a member of the flight crew he's also a high-speed uh, car driver in emergency situations he's a skilled paramedic and the multi-skilled multi-talented people in many respects but most of all they're extremely dedicated to what they do And this is a picture of Sophie as she finished the shift. And this time I've opened the aperture up to f1.4, so I've took the, the depth of field even more shallow. And the reason I can do, I can shoot at 1.4 where the uh, men were shot at 1.8, is because Sophie is obviously a, a, a lady and her facial features aren't as big as, as what the men's are, so we can use that f1.4 to get really soft fall off and still get the eye and the nose detail in, in the picture nice and sharp. I mentioned before about the continually checking and this is a picture of Matt, this is more PJ work now, more photojournalist work and I was just following Matt round for some time just taking some pictures of what he does. Um, he's checking the roses out here, he's checking all the link gear and this is something he does quite regular and spends quite a bit of time doing. 
This is Nikki, uh, she's a pilot, and this time she's checking the fuel, and that's a big part of their day as well. When we see a helicopter flying, I think sometimes it's easy to think, well, people just get in them or fly them away, but there's so much more to it. Um, there's all the, the maintenance checks, the health and safety checks, and these are, it's a continual process which takes place through the day and every day. And here Nikki is just putting the helicopter out using the, um, the heli grip to, to wheel it outside the hangar. So outside on the helipad now we've got the heli, um, we've got the rotor spinning on the aircraft and health and safety is absolutely paramount. So Richard is just casting his eyes back to me, just making sure I'm nice and safe and I'm not coming too close to the aircraft. Here's Nikki going around, she's doing her hair checks on a, on a separate day. And this time we're flying. We're up in the air with Rob is flying the aircraft and we've got Craig who's in the uh, front flight seat on the left hand side. The Bell 429 aircraft, it, it's a big aircraft externally when you look around it, but once you're inside that, that space seems to evaporate away. So I wanted to get a shot of the general operating environments inside the aircraft as we flew. So this time, again, the 12 to 24 millimeter G lens, it's a, a, a great lens, it's a great fit all in lens. And I've actually got the camera and the lens pushed through the headrest of this chair while I'm sitting on. So we're getting that good all round view. And I can see the angle of the horizon. We were banked over quite a bit in, in this shot. And again, that's testament to the flying skill of Rob, the pilot, where he can maneuver these helicopters at a great speed with great control. And this is a picture of Louise again, a nice big, I wanted to get in a shot which showed the environment, what we were in, but also the external of the aircraft. And Louise is just looking out now. When you're on board an aircraft, you become part of the flight crew and you're required to um, keep good communications with the pilot and the other uh, flight members. And one of the key things which you need to do is keep good observations outside the windows. If you spot anything which may be untoward, um, you need to let the pilot know straight away. And that's a requirement, it's not um, something which it, it's, you, you can choose to do. The, the pilot makes you very, very aware that you need to keep good observations as you fly. So dropping into the RRV now, which is a, a, it's a Volvo, it's a rapid response vehicle. And I'm going out on a call with, uh, with Dan at this moment. And as you can see, he's traveling at quite some speed in excess of 70 miles an hour. So photographically, what I wanted to do was once again capture the environment, what Dan is in. So I wanted to capture some of the uh, controls on the car, the dashboard, and almost frame them up in that, in that environment. I also wanted to capture movements at the outside of the car. So I'm playing about with shutter speed, but also just trying to make sure I get good sharp focus on the interior details of the car as well. So in photography, we never tend to get everything what we need. We're, we're always looking for light. We're always battling between shutter speed, ISO, aperture. And in many ways, it's just a balancing act of, of just finding that sweet spot, which is the best at that particular moment to give you uh, the image what you, you're looking to, to achieve. So out on location now, and you can see Richard and Craig um, in the shot there with Helimed 2.2 in the background. And as photographers, I think we have a, a great social responsibility, um, not only in what we show, but also in what we don't show. So in this particular instance, I'm working with a 70 to 200 lens, so I can stay well away um, from Craig and from Richard. But I just did wanted to show the Helimed 2.2 in the background, just to set the narrative of the scene of what's taken place. So this is Craig and we're just preparing to fly back to the airbase. And I didn't realize before I spent the time with the air ambulance service, just how emotionally and physically draining the job can be. And I think it's a great testament to everybody who was involved in that service, for how professional um, the way they carry themselves uh, throughout the day and, and the work, what they do. So this is just a close out shot now with the guys walking back to the aircraft. 
and we can just see we've got Helimed 2-2 over to the right hand side and we see the guys going back to return to the airbase. Now the end product of this and the whole reason for this um, exercise was to raise awareness of the luxury air ambulance and also their self-funding um, requirements. So we did this by a, a number of ways. We had the local press involved, we had the BBC radio involved, we had a number of print exhibitions and the number of magazines of, of, of printed um, articles for us as well over, the, over the, the last few months. So this was one of the exhibitions, this was at the Royal Photographic Society and they did a, a digital and print exhibition and we did some presentations for them as well. And this is an overview of the exhibition and you can see the, the, the actual size of the digital display on the wall. And again, the images from the Sony cameras, um, high resolution, very, very clear, very sharp. And you can see how they represent even on a, on a, a wall of this size. And one of the exhibitions actually took place at the airbase in Melksham. And these are some of the pictures you can see on screen now. Well, that's the end of the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and got a good insight into the amazing work the Wiltshire Air Ambulance Service provide. For more information on the kit I used, you can find a What's In My Kit Bag video on the virtual Sony stand. Thanks again and goodbye.